Pallav, uh, it's great to have you here and talk about your bootstrapping journey. Uh, friends, uh, Pallav is a co-founder of Fusion Charts, a very successful bootstrap startup which started in uh, Kolkata and currently serving thousands of customers globally from Bangalore. Uh, you know, in addition to being a very successful uh, bootstrap company, uh, Pallav is also anchoring, uh, you know, one of the key anchors of Boot Up India. This is the latest initiative from iSpirit to grow the product ecosystem. So uh, let me welcome Pallav and uh, we will be putting forward a few questions uh, which, you know, would be very important and, uh, you know, hopefully tell you more about Boot Up India. So uh, Pallav, uh, welcome and uh, how are you doing today? Hey Sandeep, thanks a lot. Thanks for hosting me. Uh, I'm doing great today. Always a good day. Excellent. That that that's like a you know startup. You know, uh, every every day is good, and there are too many you know too few days in a week to <laughs> actually count, right? I don't know each day. Okay, is uh, so, right. So uh, you know, I'd like to start with a, a brief journey about yourself, and you know, we kind of go back into the past uh, a little bit, if you like. So uh, would like to share, you know, very quickly a few words about how you started and, you know, uh, how has been your journey since you started. Right. So I call myself an accidental entrepreneur, Sandeep. Uh, Fusion Charts was not started as a business. It was started as a way to make pocket money. So when I was in high school, I just needed a lot of pocket money for my coffees and bowling alleys. And uh, I realized that I had some coding skills which I could utilize to make something that would pay me money. Uh, started off as a simple article for a website which would pay dollar a word uh, for innovative things like uh, innovative articles on web technologies and at that point in time I was coding, macro, coding on Macromedia Flash which is now known as Adobe Flash and which is not famous anymore after HTML5 came into being and we are trying to figure out how to make better charts on web and that is how I coded something which looked pretty fancy at that point in time wrote an article on it and got it published and then uh, a lot of requests started coming in for customization of that uh, chart, so one feature of the other. And rather than doing for individuals, I started productizing the entire charting library. And that is how the business started. So this was back in 2002. And for the first three years, I was doing it all alone, building the entire product, the website, the sales, the marketing, before I actually went on to hire somebody for the uh, team. Yeah, that sounds, uh, you know, that sounds so so uh, you know weird because you know when you know when you, when you look at inflection points like you know flash getting you know kind of uh, uh, accosted by HTML5 so I was one of the people who thought that hey all those flash based tools and products are just going to disappear and you know what are the founders going to do next so I think it, it's awesome to be able to you know look at those kind of situations and uh, you know come out a winner uh, and you know maybe completely change the way you actually work with the market. So uh, you started, uh, you know, you said you, you started uh, fusion charts to gain some pocket money, or like they call it in the valley nowadays, uh, you know, ramen, you know, just earn enough to buy ramen for yourself, right? So was bootstrapping something that you did by choice, or was it because you felt that that's the only way that you can really go forward? So this was in 2002, and in that point in time, I'd never heard of VCs, venture capital funding, and plus I was 16 years old, 16 and a half to be precise. Uh, even if I would have heard of VCs, in my right mind, I would not have thought that anybody would come and fund me. So bootstrapping was not a choice. It just happened coincidentally. And uh, the good part about bootstrapping at that point in time was that I did not know about any other external options. And it just helped me focus on one thing. Hey, you know what? Let's make products and get money from customers. Because that's the only source of money that I could think of. And one thing led to another. And after a point in time, we started having such a cash flow business that we never had to go for a VC because our cash flow was helping us grow at every single point in time. So it was more uh, uh, accidental choice than by design. I think that would resonate a lot with you know several bootstrap uh, entrepreneurs because uh, you know we've seen uh, very many you know a lot of bootstrap entrepreneurs who, who get into business, you know, a software or a, a product business, just thinking about the business and not even you know uh, not even a doubt in their mind as to how it will get funded or how it will scale up, and they just focus and work on the business. So that's uh, that's great. That's really awesome. So this journey must have been really hard for you in terms of, you know, scaling up from you know pocket money to providing pocket money to several more people. You know, uh, a few hundred people who probably be working for you. Uh, so what are the most difficult challenges you faced? Uh, you know, uh, when you when you were really scaling up, how was that journey for you? So I think the toughest part of bootstrapping is not about convincing yourself or trying to get some money to for your ramen or pizza or beer. Uh, the toughest part about bootstrapping is convincing other people to join you. 
because everyone hears about this so called funded companies or the big companies or the brand names which they want to join and as a small tiny self funded bootstrap company how do you share your vision or your story with them and that's the toughest part so you have to re so that also brings a very good uh, aspect of it it means that people who are joining you are joining you for the real thing which means they are sharing the passion for your product they're sharing the passion for delivering a solution for the customers while it takes a lot of time to be able to find those people but once you found them the culture is set uh, the right way from day one so i'd say in terms of scaling money is never the problem it's more about being able to leverage uh, the strengths of your team members and trying to get them in the first place is the most important scaling challenge that one will face and the more and more senior that you want to hire so for example if you want to hire a head of sales or if you want to hire a head of marketing and you want that guy to be experienced for like let's say between 6 and 10 years uh, he would be he would not be as willing to join you if he had another choice at a funded startup or a larger company so how you solve that as a bootstrap entrepreneur uh, is very much dependent on how resourceful you are right so it's saying that you know uh, a potential hire would say that you know it's it's very sexy to work for a vc funded startup but uh, you know it's not as sexy to work for a startup which is successful and so you know you got to kind of make them believe that hey it's very sexy to work for us you know so that's where i think a lot of uh, you know the, a lot of energy and charisma actually flows in from the founder to ensure that you know is able to a find the right people and then you know get them to join and work for them that's true so that's true you that's very important Right, right, yeah. So uh, you know, it's it's very easy to uh, really say that hey, you know, there's there's this successful bootstrap uh, company, and you know, we kind of uh, believe in bootstrapping because you found that there are other people who are successful. Uh, you know, and startups actually get you know a lot of confidence when they see stories like yours from Fusion Charts. But if you were to actually you know start up again, and you were not 16 years old, right? Uh, how would it be different for you? Uh, you know, in terms of raising growth capital, would you still look at you know doing things organically or maybe you know look at two different options uh, what what would you have done so again that again depends on do i have the experience and hindsight of starting a fusion charts um, behind me if i have the experience and hindsight of starting a fusion charts behind me uh, the first thing i would do is pro probably look at a slightly bigger market so when you're bootstrapping uh, you do not essentially first up look at a market size or the total available market which you do in case you have to go raise a fund because the vc will first ask you how what is the total available market size so most of the bootstrap companies they start in a niche market uh, where there's a clear problem and they're trying to provide a solution to it and it's a great thing to do at that point in time because you're you're able to establish yourself as a, a thought leader or a market leader in that niche seg segment but as and when you move ahead what are the complementary areas that you can grow and are you capturing those areas fast enough and you have the resources and the bandwidth internal bandwidth to be able to capture those so sometimes bootstrapping does not allow you that flexibility at a very early stage but if you're growing fast and if you are able to identify those complementary opportunities at that point in time you always have an option to go and raise growth capital so in our case if uh, i had to go back all over again outside i would compress this 12 year journey into possibly 6 years or lesser by moving much faster and committing less mistakes and possibly you would have raised growth capital at uh, at a point in time where uh, it would have helped us establish a much larger uh, share market share of the market right so uh, essentially you know i guess then it's it's all about speed right if you're able to achieve uh, you know breakneck speed uh, you know to take advantage of situations in the market uh, opportunities that are coming and you know if you're able to do that on your own it's great if not you have to you know really look at uh, alternative ways and you know uh, raise your capital and move forward but i guess the situation is very different where uh, you know today you cannot you cannot afford to wait for things to happen you really have to either grow up and scale up very fast on your own uh, or go and look for growth capital uh, you know looking at the number of startups purely the number of startups that you know get created in every single space uh, is is phenomenal compared to what was earlier so uh, no shall uh, we talk a little bit about uh, boot up india uh, you are one of the anchors of boot up india and uh, you know you you've been through the the whole phase where this was conceptualized and you know now it's is kind of uh, you know off the floor so uh, uh, why is i spirit uh, doing this program could you share some light on you know what's what's this all about right so our aim at i spirit is to help spawn as many successful product startups as we can today unfortunately as per media success is only defined by fundraising 
but we believe otherwise. We believe that there are a lot of companies out there who are doing phenomenal jobs uh, for their customers and they're break even or they're profitable and they have an ability to grow and they're investing in the right places in terms of their teams, the processes and the products that they're building for their customers. But they're not getting the media love, they're not getting the traction, uh, they're not getting the public uh, recognition uh, which would help them scale even faster. So at iSpirit, we, at iSpirit, we want to highlight those companies as well because right now they are otherwise cast aside by the rest of the media. Uh, but they are actually success stories as well on an equal footing. Right. So uh, you you run a company full time, and you know you've been kind of uh, well, you know, well versed with what you want to achieve with Boot Up India, and you're spending a lot of time on this. So what draws you into contributing to make you know Boot Up India happen, and you know spend time with startups and you know product uh, founders in the Bootstrap ecosystem to drive this whole thing. So what what is your kick? So I think uh, there are two aspects to it, Sandeep. One is the paid forward culture, which is what has made the valley like. Every time you have learned something, how do you ensure that somebody else is also being a part of that learning so that he can build up on that learning and use it for his own uh, product or company? And this is how the culture of the Valley is. So that is definitely which I completely believe in because I've been mentored by a lot of people in my career uh, because of which where we have reached where we are. And the second is every time we are uh, interacting with another product entrepreneur or a bootstrap entrepreneur, there's so much learning for me as well. So it's always a give and take. So uh, I think that sums it up all. It's a give and take uh, philosophy of being able to contribute and in the same time adding value to what I'm doing. That's that's really uh, you know something I think you know we ought to be doing uh, much more and you know keep building upon that because I think one of the, the biggest reasons for success in the valley is uh, you know people work with each other. It's not about competition. It's about learning and paying forward and you know making things happen as an ecosystem. So I think it, it's it, it's it's happening here, but you know it's it's too few and far between. So I think initiatives like this uh, are in the right direction, and hopefully with uh, you know uh, involvement, deep involvement, folks like you, this is really going to you know uh, scale up and you know uh, take uh, take good shape. So how do you expect the startups that are working in this program? What is the intended way in which iSpirit is actually going to help them? Right. So I think uh, the way we were looking at it is. Uh, what is the value that a VC adds to a company after a company gets funded? So a VC helps him. A VC first validates his idea. He, a VC helps him get some media pre, media love. A VC helps him connect to the customers, and the VC then mentors him. And we're trying to extrapolate all of that and say, how can we do the same for a bootstrap entrepreneur? So part of our uh, Boot Up India program is to select these eight companies and expose them to the media and saying, hey, these guys are doing equally good work. And then internally, we're also putting up a program where they're going to be connected with some of our uh, jury members or other mentors, where uh, they will be receiving uh, they'll be receiving mentorship on what they have been doing. And this would not be something which is a very uh, theoretical mentorship, but it'd be more on like if you're a bootstrap entrepreneur, you'll run into various problems and different and different types of problems in your life. Some of those problems would be very trivial, and some of those problems would be strategic. Uh, and more often than not, somebody in the network would have solved it in a clever way. How do we ensure that that guy is able to come over, get over this problem very soon? So this is the kind of mentorship that we'd be providing. And that being said, uh, once all of this is done, we'd also be helping them with their uh, overall strategy or anything customer connect that we can do for them and things alike. So this seems to be more like a, a structured program where you know they're, they're actually going to undergo a one-year uh, you know mentorship. Uh, you know, with specific intervention points and, and uh, you know, have resource access to resources from iSpirit uh, and other product founders who've, you know, uh, experienced uh, similar challenges and successfully, you know, been able to uh, adapt to situations and overcome these kind of challenges. That's right. right. Okay. So, you know, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the current uh, product ecosystem in India, uh, several startups are, you know, going down the VC route, and uh, start the bootstrap startups typically have not been uh, celebrated enough, uh, you know. So if you uh, look at, you know, the bootstrap startups that you've been, uh, you know, interacting with or you, uh, you know, uh, had had chance to kind of work with, uh, is getting funded a measure of success and therefore you know, should be celebrated the way it is, uh, or do you also see bootstrap startups, uh, you know, being ripe for celebrating? So I think uh, that's a question of philosophy. Do you want to celebrate the means or do you want to celebrate the goal? 
if you are celebrating funding we are still celebrating the means and that being said uh, success almost always guarantees funding funding never guarantees success even 8 or 9 out of 10 funded companies still fail today so uh, the fact that we are just celebrating the means is something we need to re- we need to relook at we need to celebrate bootstrap companies who have achieved their first 10 customers 100 customers their first million dollar in revenue their 100th employee their first global award those are things which will inspire a lot of other companies to go and do it out there today if a lot of entrepreneurs are relying on vc money to even get started that's a wrong notion or that's a wrong signal we are sending out to a lot of potential entrepreneurs in the country who could be solving some good problems uh and more and more i believe not every company has to be a billion dollar company you can very easily build a 5 to 10 million dollar company have 50 to 100 employees solve a real customer problem and be happy about it but every single time you hear about a funded company the entire hypothesis behind us is that it's going to be a billion dollar company but if you look at the entire story even in us in the last 7 years we've only created 40 to 50 billion dollar companies in the uh, it sector in the technology space so should we uh, why should we not enable and inspire those other uh, non funded companies to grow up and potentially become larger business and be happy about it so sure. excellent so all of you spoke about uh, the way you you know started you you bootstrapped uh, you know with, with nothing you know to show you started programming and coding and you know, you, you brought broad fusion charts to the you know, place where it is right now uh, so you also spoke about the fact that there's a right time to scale up in terms of you know getting growth growth capital and there's several different ways to do it so that's that's great that's uh, you know awesome but uh, would you say that there are uh, some of the ways of raising growth capital are better suited to some types of companies and not other companies uh, what is your view on this so i mean there are businesses where you don't get to see your first dollar till you are the market leader so let's say consumer space where monopoly is the only thing that matters in which case growth capital is something you need to raise right away i mean not just growth capital you need to raise a bootstrapped capital you need to raise a survival capital then you need to raise growth capital in such cases so take in case uh, take for example e-commerce uh, you cannot just be a niche e-commerce player anymore because somebody will come and gobble that space up but if you're building ip let's a software product so think of internet businesses uh, that are built from india let's say a uh, kayako of sort which is a help desk tracking system let's say visual website optimizer these are very niche tools which can be sold online and all the customer validation is coming online you are in constant touch with the customers over phone webex email and things alike now nothing stops you from building a great product there and once you have that product you have that early validation um, you have some revenues then you go and put a growth uh, then you go and put growth philosophies behind it and build a marketing team sales team outbound team bd team and then at that point in time you have an option of funding it either internally or externally if you think that funding externally and for putting in every dollar and for putting in every dollar you get more than a dollar that's a clear growth capital uh, opportunity that you can uh, go and leverage but if you think that you still want to build some more motor around the business and uh, go further in that uh, path before raising in capital that's again a personal choice so when formula it's a personal choice of whether you want to bootstrap it at that point in time or raise growth capital right i think that's uh, you know that that's that's obviously you know a call that a founder has to take based upon you know what what sector they are working in and what stage of business they are in and what stage of growth they are in so uh, thank you so much uh, pallav uh, for sparing time and attending this this talk uh, we would like to you know definitely see boot up india being one of the trail blazers and uh, you know with, 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 with folks like you and others who are there i think this is going to be a a rocking show so uh, 15th september is the last year i guess for people to you know submit the nominations and the launch pad happens on the 2nd of october so i uh, hope to see you there for love uh, you know with, with the rest of the team and thank you so much everyone for watching it's been awesome having you here uh, okay thank you so much it's been a pleasure to be talking to you